that's a nice fish. That's a nice fish for French meadows, that's for sure. Fishhuntshoot.com offers a variety of tackle as well as rods and reels designed to get you on more and bigger fish. Check it out today at fishhuntshoot.com. Howdy folks, Cal Kellogg here. I want to talk to you today about what is probably the most overlooked offering in the entire world of trout fishing. Um, and that's because it's not a trout lure. I'm talking about soft plastic black bass worms, your standard finesse worms. These have a place in your trout fishing box and almost no one uses them. Let me show you some of these. Some of these have the, the twister tail version, but most of these worms are the ones I'd use for black bass fishing here in Northern California. They're what you call, you know, your straight tail, four or five inch finesse worm. You put that on a Carolina rig or a split shot rig, drag it along the bottom, super effective for bass. So how do you use them for trout? You don't want to you don't want to put it on a Texas rig and cast it out there. Although I've got to say, when I'm out with bass pros, you know, doing stories and stuff like that for the Fishing for magazine, I have seen many trout caught on Cinco's. I've seen many trout caught on, you know, curly tail grubs and finesse worms like these. So they will hit them. They have a thin profile and they do look like a minnow when they're moving through the water. But uh, by and large, this isn't how you want to fish them. Let me show you how I use these. So you'll, you'll probably, if you've been watching my videos, you're going to recognize this rig. I was using this at French Meadows the other day. It's my... Uh, my Strike Master Dodger, it's, it's on my Vance's rod, and I have behind that Strike Master, let me just lean the rod down here. Behind that Strike Master, I have about an 18 inch leader, and it's coming down to a, a river hook. This could be a slow death hook or whatever. This is my standard, I'm gonna run, you know, a threaded night crawler behind a blade. The going gets tough, time to break out the night crawlers. Well, you don't have night crawlers you don't want to deal with night crawlers or if you want to experiment with some different colors like this awesome looking you know purple with chartreuse tail version you can break out a plastic worm um, some of my favorites are the clear the clear versions work really well but in this case let's use that chartreuse trick tail version i'd use this you know possibly if the water is stained something like that if the water's clear i'm going with a clear worm but this is how i use them just take this worm and i want about you know that's a four inch worm i think it's four it's either four four and a half inches i'm going to break that worm in half i'm going to break it off right about there you just just snap it right in two no big deal take your hook Take your, uh, take your worm, let me get close to the camera here, insert that hook right in the middle of that bait, just kind of work it up, 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 around the hook, just kind of keep it as close to the center as you can, work it around, bring it down, you can see I'm working on them, bringing it around that hook, so about right there, I'm going to pop it out, pop the tip out, work that worm up. I'm working it up, down, all around, work it over the eye, get it on there semi-straight. That's it. That's all you need to do. Run that behind. Wow, I got a tangle here. I'm not anywhere near the boat. I'm tangled. Run that behind a blade. Run it behind a set of flashers. Um, this was working great at French Meadows the other day with the worm about 18 inches behind it. And I guarantee you, if we were there right now, I wish we were there right now. If we were there right now and I started running this, I'd put some Procure on it, some Nightcrawler scent, maybe some of my favorite anise krill. We would catch fish on that. Um, if we were down at Folsom, a place where there's a lot of pond smelt, I would go with a clear, a clear flake version of the worm like that. That would be very effective down there. So just because you're running, you know, blades or flashers on a crawler, don't think you need to run, you know, a real worm or those super expensive gulp crawlers that are, you know, super effective, but they are pricey. You can get a couple packs of, you know, standard finesse worms, or you can raise your bass fish and tackle, grab a few of these, and they will work very well. Um, when trolled just like you troll any other crawler just remember to put some procure on them get some scent on them the soft feel 
fish come in they hit them man it feels real and uh, they'll keep hitting them just like it's a real worm until they get get hooked anyway that's our tip for today that's something you didn't think about isn't it anyhow I'll catch you next time. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, please hit it now. And uh, I just want to thank you guys for all the support you've been giving the channel. We're having a lot of fun over here. Um, of course, we're catching a lot of fish. Catching a lot of fish on camera. But anyway, do some experimenting when you're out on the water. Just because it's a bass lure or a crappie lure or whatever doesn't mean you can't use it to catch trout or kings and vice versa. You know, if you're a bass guy, you know, don't hesitate to try those trout spoons out. I've caught so many nice bass trolling for trout. They eat the same things in these reservoirs we fish. They eat pond smelt. They eat shad. If you've got a shad or a pond smelt imitation, you're going to catch catfish, you're going to catch bass, and you're going to catch trout. If you're a trout troller, it's just a matter of time before you catch catfish. And if you're a bass guy, it's just a matter of time before you're going to have a nice trout. Grab your Cinco or your worm or whatever. So get out of the box, do some experimenting, and I'll catch you next time right here on YouTube.